Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're talking about stress. And this is from page 26 of my journey through the cross. So for, we started out, this was from class this morning, our group. We started out talking about the stress scale and how stressed our life is. Uh, some people had six, seven, eights. Some people were down toward five. Others were a little under five. So it's good to back up and say, how stressed is my life? How stressed is it? Well, if it's too stressed, that's not a good thing. So you want to back up and kind of try to be objective and get some, get some thoughts going there on your life. And then you want, we, we did a, a whole scale where we marked an X and where we are and where we want to be. But we went in from how stressed we were to why we feel stressed. And a lot of the reasons were because of the demands of the world, because of the demands of relationships. And so we were kind of sifting through those and realizing that those are not the easy yoke that Christ is calling you to live and walk in. So if there's something that is pressuring you or causing you to feel stressed that Christ is not leading you to do, you don't have to do it. The king of the universe says you do not have to do it if he's not leading you to do it. So we talked a little bit about why we felt stressed. And then we asked the question, would you like or do you want to feel less stressed in life? And then we referred to uh, Jesus when he approach uh, different people, he would say, do you want to be healed? And they would say yes. And then he would heal them. But he asked them that because he wasn't going to impose himself on them and because he wanted to be in agreement with them. Amos 3.3. Would you like less stress in your life? Well, if you do, then you can agree with Christ. In Mark 9.23, he says, everything or all things are possible for those who believe. So if you believe that he can help you have less stress in your life, then that is possible. When you believe that he can and that he will help you to do that and that it's possible through him, that opens the door for you to have it. That's the first step in having it is believing that it can be that way. And then we reflected and we said, well, Am I willing to lift up whatever the stressful situation is? Am I willing to lift it up to the Lord and ask for a better way? A lot of times the stress that you're feeling is a habit that you've had your whole life that's always been stressful. So it can be a bad habit and you can shift that. You can invite the Holy Spirit into that situation and ask him to reveal any wounds that are feeding that cycle of stress and purge those out and then you can say lord show me a better way you know one thing i ask myself sometimes is i'll say do you want to do this for the rest of your life and so that kind of motivates me to get in there and shift things and submit things to the lord and then everybody listed we went around and listed some things in particular um, that each one of us, um, you know, it, for each particular person, like this traffic stresses me out or having to cook dinner for four kids stresses me out or my husband stresses me out. We shared all the different things that stressed us out. And we said, you know, are we willing to? Yes, we're willing to. And so that's the first step in getting it to shift is being willing for it to shift and be willing to, you know, move yourself some, shift yourself some so that the whole thing can shift. So let's remember though, we went over this too, that regardless of your feelings, regardless of your perceptions or your circumstances, you are in Christ, inside Jesus Christ, and he is inside of you. And you are inside of Jesus Christ and he's inside of you while he is in God. So you are hidden in Christ, in God. So this is true 24-7, 365, even when you feel stressed, that is still true. So that's encouraging. 
So if we are in Christ, which we are, then we follow him, right? So we look to him to know what to do. We do what he does. So let's look at him while he was in a body like we are, so we will know what to do. We like to think that Jesus was never stressed, right? Because he was the son of God. But he was also the son of man. The son of man. And so Philippians 2, 7 tells us that, it's a very, very, very important verse here, tells us that Jesus emptied himself of his superpowers, if you will, emptied himself of his, of his Godhead, being made in human likeness in order to be fully human just as we are. Fully human just as we are. So that's very important to understand that he emptied out his the Godhead in him so that he could be just like us. So another question, was Jesus ever stressed while he was in an earthly body? If he was made just like us by emptying himself of his Godhead, then were there times that in being just like us that he was stressed? Let's consider some. What about the eight woes in Matthew 23 when he was very angry at the Pharisees and he was lamb blasting them. What about the agony of sweating blood in the Garden of Gethsemane? That sounds stressful to me. What about enduring 39 lashings where your back is open? It's so injured that it is, is just open wounds all over. What about the six-hour crucifixion? That's after the lashings. That sounds very stressful to me. What about even those years that between age 12 and age 30, those hormonal years, I call them, because they're, those were a lot of the teen years in there, that could have been some stress in his life where he learned a lot of lessons in order to understand how we feel in life. Okay, so those are some things that we can consider about Jesus' humanity and the stress that he felt definitely while he was here. And so then we said, does Jesus rush around like we do? Does he hurry? And did he rest more than we do? And did he spend more time with the Father than we do? So 11, how do we know for sure that Jesus felt tremendous stress more than once? And then we came down to, we went over those, and then we came to Hebrews 4.15, uh, which is really important too. Hebrews 4.15, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we do have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are and he did not sin in any of the temptations so we do have a high priest this is saying who is able to empathize with our weaknesses what are your weaknesses what are they get out a sheet of paper or on your phone and list them all whether there's three or ten or a hundred and look at those weaknesses, and you can say out loud, Jesus Christ has empathy for me in these weaknesses. He has empathy for you, compassion, a like-mindedness, like I've been there and I'm going to help you. He understands. Weakness there means all of our weaknesses and human frailties, which he shared. And every way there means each and every part of the whole, one piece at a time. So that covers everything. There's nothing that you are going through or have been through or will go through that Jesus cannot relate to and understand and have compassion for you for. So 12, according to this verse, can Jesus empathize with every problem and stress that we have to deal with here? Of course he can. If so, then can he and will he show you how to live with less stress in your life? Of course he will, but you have to allow him to, and you have to ask him to, and you have to be willing to learn and willing to be interrupted 
so he can teach you. So he can and will if you will agree with him. Amos 3, 3, so that he, that he will and that that is his plan for you. This is important. The less stressed you are, the closer you can follow him. The less, not the more, but the less stressed you are, the closer you can follow him. That is something to think about. So we had some reflective questions here. Um, is God stressed out? Is God stressed ever? Nah, he doesn't need to be. He doesn't need to be stressed. And so if he's never stressed, and you, are you walking with him? Are you? Well, if your answer is yes, and he's above you and in you and all around you, and he's never stressed, and you're walking with him in the easy yoke, remember? Is there ever a time that you must be stressed? Seriously, think about it. If God is never stressed and he's your God and you're walking with him, is there ever a time that you have to be stressed or you must be stressed? Nope, there's not. You're doing it to yourself if you're stressed. You're stressing yourself out by your thoughts and you're not relying on the Lord. You're not trusting in him. You, you're not having your wounds healed. You're reacting maybe. So think about that and ask him to take you where you want to go. But we did um, go through some of these questions. Are you willing for him to teach you how to lower your stress in your life? Or have you got this? I got this marriage, God. I got this job. I got my life, God. You just stay over there on your throne. I got it because I'm in charge. and I got it. Is that you? Are you willing to be interrupted, like I said before, in doing something for him to speak to you and show you that you don't need to be doing that? Are you willing to forego some things and let go of other things to have lower stress in your life? Are you willing to do some things you've never done before to have less stress in your life? Are you willing to rearrange your priorities for yourself to be less stressed? Are you willing to slow down? Are you willing to release your own agenda for his? That's the exchanged life. Here, take my life. I don't want it. It's worthless. I'll take your life. And you live my life for me and through me. Are you willing to be led by him throughout the day? Are you willing to spend more time with the Father like Jesus did? And are you willing to rest more like he did? This internal, spiritual, and emotional rest. And... The question, are you willing to be led by him throughout the day, that determines or, or that is depending on your view of the day. If you think it's your day, this is my day. I made the day. I'm sustaining the day. I will determine everything that happens in the day. That's going to be hard to be led by the Lord. But if you come into reality and you say, this is the day the Lord has made. I didn't make the day. I'm not sustaining the day. I don't have any control over the day. I'm going to follow you because you're the shepherd and I'm just a sheep. And I'm going to follow you because you're the vine and I'm just a branch. So I'm going to listen and follow. Here's our prayer. Lord, please help us with our stress levels and our stress patterns. I know that you don't want us putting stress on ourselves because you don't put stress on us. I want to be in agreement with you walking in your easy yoke. Help me to become aware of the triggers and show me a better way so that I can walk more closely with you. In Jesus' name. Last two points. There's always enough time in the day to do the will of God. Always, always, always. Every single day, the rest of your life, there's always, always, always plenty of time to do the will of God in every single day. So if you understand that, then you want to live in that. And that will mean necessarily that eliminating everything that's not God's will will cause this to happen. As you listen and follow, you're going to ask him to eliminate all the things you don't need to be doing. Where's all the wood, hay, and stubble in my life? Let's get rid of it. And I only want the jewels and the precious stones. That's what I want. So that's something you can do there. 
And then this is what God um, pressed upon me one day. God made time and God made me. God owns time and God owns me. So my time is his time. All right. So that was our lesson, a really speedy Gonzalez version of it. But anyway, I hope some I've said has been insightful for you or inspiring or has pricked your interest in seeking the Lord on simplifying your life and making it less stressful because that's his will for you. How do I know that? Because he says his yoke is easy. It's not hard. It's not sharp. It's not pressing. It doesn't whip you on the back. It is easy and it's comfortable and it's pleasant. So seek him about making your life an easy yoke so that you'll know you're walking with him. All right, I'll see you soon.